We're still talking about the Ecamm Live green screen screen sharing feature, and uh, this is video two of five. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and uh, yeah, we're still diving into uh, basically this series of five videos all about how you can get the most out of the new feature in uh, Ecamm Live, which is currently in the beta, but uh, we'll be making it into the mainstream uh, pretty soon, I would imagine. Uh, and this is where basically you can apply green screen to a screen sharing overlay. And why is that important? Well, it means that you can use uh, programs like Keynote or uh, PowerPoint to basically create presentations with green backgrounds so that then when you share those into Ecamm Live, it has a transparency that basically anything that you've added into your presentation will just appear magically over the top of your uh, scenes in Ecamm Live so that it will allow you to do things like this. <laughs> this is the example that I keep showing. Uh, and there you can see we've got transparent uh, text coming through. So what I thought I'd do in this particular video, uh, this uh, video two of five, is to uh, show you a couple of ways that you can achieve basically that effect that I've just shown you and show you how to do some of the animation that I did in that in Keynote, but then also to show you a couple of things that I've done in uh, Stream Deck as well to make this whole thing a lot easier to work with. So that is what we're going to do today. So let's start actually with uh, the Stream Deck and get ourselves set up in the right footing to begin with. Uh, so I'm going to come into my demo mode. Uh, now, if you remember from the video uh, that I did last, which would have been uh, earlier today, yesterday, <laughs> whichever time zone you're in, I'm not sure, um, then basically the screen sharing was, uh, as you can see, I've got this green screen here, uh, which is just my uh, keynote presentation. Uh, and then I've also got a little overlay, which is of that, which is this uh, overlay up at the top here, it's green screen share, I've called it. Uh, and you can see that as I move this around on the screen, it's moving this sort of uh, transparent box around. And that is simply just the green screen. And in fact, if I turn off the green screen function, which you do by clicking the little pencil icon in here, by the way, you can also do this in the settings in here. So sometimes if you've got layers stacked upon each other or different overlays rather stacked upon each other, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get to the one that you want to uh, work with or check, adjust the settings, but you can always do it from in here as well. So here is that particular overlay. I could actually just come into this little cogwheel and just change it from there. That's often a lot easier than trying to do it in the scene itself, if you know what I mean. So here, if I toggled the green screen off, then there you go. Now you can see that this is basically just the scene that we've got going on down here. Uh, and now if I was to actually just advance this slide, let me just get that lined up again. If I was to actually advance this slide, uh, then we'll have another little animation come in and you can see it's just green, but if I toggle the green screen feature, then it becomes transparent. So that is basically in a nutshell how that works. So I have got that at the moment, um, as you can see, uh, in all scenes. So uh, in case you uh, weren't familiar with the way that overlays work in Ecamm Live, there are three different sort of locations, if you like, that you can have an overlay. You can either have it show in the background, and so that will show in the background of all scenes behind everything else that's stacked up on top of it. It could also be something that is just unique to a particular scene. Uh, and so here you can see it says show in current scene, uh, or you can have it uh, show in all scenes. And so that will obviously show in every scene. So uh, I have a lot of overlays that are shown in all scenes, but then I just toggle them on and off as I need them. And that is the way that I'm currently working with this particular one for this example. Uh, there are times when I would be using this uh, exactly the same methodology, using the green screen screen sharing feature to share keynote slides and things like that, but I might want it in a specific scene. I'll talk about that in a later video and why you might want to do that. Uh, but for now, it's just sitting here at the top. But the issue with this potentially is at the moment, it's showing nothing because it's just a transparent green background. So it's uh, taking out the green. But if I was to stop this presentation by uh, pressing escape, uh, then now it's still screen sharing the uh, um, uh, the keynote slide uh, uh, program. Uh, however, it's uh, obviously we don't want to see all of that uh, and it's still just keying out that, that little green bit. So what we would want to do is come up to here uh, and then just hide this overlay by pressing the little icon. But obviously we don't want to actually be doing all this crap by uh, moving the mouse. So what I would recommend is you add this as a Stream Deck button to uh, show and hide this overlay, which is exactly what I've done. So now I can toggle it off when I'm not using it, but then when I activate the uh, uh, presentation like this, I can turn it back on again and now it is active, but obviously you can't see it, it's just transparent. 
if that makes sense. So uh, let me uh, show you quickly how I did that. Uh, and then the other thing that we want to do is add in ways that we can actually advance these slides and things. So uh, first of all, I'll come into my uh, stream deck and out of demo mode, too many buttons to press today. Uh, and basically all we're going to do is in Ecamm Live. So if you come into your Ecamm Live uh, plugin in stream deck, if you are a stream deck user, uh, if you're not, I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, and then down here, we've got uh, an action. We've got loads of actions, actually, from Ecamm Live. They've done such a great job of uh, putting in all of these actions so that you can you don't have to rely on keyboard shortcuts and things like that. But there is one down here somewhere, which is this one, uh, Show and Hide Overlay. So you simply just add that one onto your stream deck, and this happens to be this one. I haven't made a proper icon for it yet, so I've got the type over it. Uh, I'm a bit, uh, a bit like that. I like to make my own icons for everything. <laughs> So anyway, here we've got this. This is the uh, the show hide overlay action. Uh, and so here it's just selecting this green screen share. And that is up here, this green screen share. So when I press that button, it will just toggle it on and off. So if I just come out of this for a moment, uh, basically, you can see that I am uh, I've got my uh, my overlay over the top of it and I can just toggle that on and off like that by pressing that button. So that is what I have done with that. But now also bear in mind that basically what we're doing uh, to get these uh, animation effects is we're essentially just advancing slides in Keynote. So what's the best way to do that? Well, uh, you could just actually have Keynote as the active application and then sort of press next and click through them. Uh, you could use something like a little clicker, a little uh, Bluetooth remote to uh, advance the slides, a presentation remote. Uh, but then again, you would need Keynote to be the active application or you'd need to program it with Keyboard Maestro or something like that. It all sounds too complicated, doesn't it? Well, fortunately, you don't need to do any of that because there is a Keynote uh, plugin for Stream Deck as well. And there's also a PowerPoint one as well. So if you're using PowerPoint, then you can do that with PowerPoint as well. So I'll just come down here uh, and you can see down here somewhere we've got a uh, keynote. There we go. And just in case you weren't familiar with how to get it, let me just quickly show you where this is. One second, just toggle that off. There we go. Uh, if you come up to the top here to the uh, Stream Deck store and then you go to the plugins and then you come up here and you just type keynote, then you'll find it in there. There we go. So install that plugin or if you're using PowerPoint, search for PowerPoint and then it will come and you can install that one and basically what that gives you is once the plugins installed as you can see uh, we've now got this set of actions that we can add just specifically for Keynote we've got play next slide previous slide first slide last slide uh, and all I'm really using is the next and previous uh, and then we've got the same for PowerPoint as well uh, almost so PowerPoint's got the same it's also got load presentation but then basically the same uh, so that is how we're using that and I've basically just dragged those on so I've got two little arrows here for uh, next slide and previous slide uh, and that is how I'm basically cycling through those animations so that means that if I come back into uh, this one and I uh, come out of this view <laughs> I toggle my green screen sharing back on then I can press my little button and it will just advance to the next slide which is basically the next animation. And so that is how I'm using that with Stream Deck. So what I thought we'd do is we'd just make a little example of actually how I made something similar to that overlay that's just popped on there. Uh, so if I come back into my demo mode, <laughs> I'm going to exit this particular presentation and I'm going to come back into, whoops, just hide that one, uh, come back into this one that we were doing yesterday. So uh, uh, or it may have been today, depending on your time zone, I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is basically the, uh, the little animation that we made yesterday, a bit of a silly one really, with uh, these cameras. So uh, the way that this works is uh, if I activate this uh, this uh, animation, you can see that these little cameras fly in and uh, they're flying in on the screen up here as well. And then I had them moving around a little bit and then just disappearing off the screen. So very, very silly, isn't it? But anyway, what I'm going to do this time is I thought I'd make a little one with the, uh, the, the sort of transparent text that moves in uh, and have some sort of animation with that just to get give you an idea of how the, the sorts of animations basically that you can do with Keynote and how you might use those with this. So uh, I've got a new slide there ready and what I thought we'd do is sort of change it up a little bit. So uh, that one had uh, some sort of sliding panels coming in sort of diagonally and then some text coming over the top. So uh, perhaps what we could do is uh, maybe some bars coming down from the top and some bars coming down from the bottom and then the text sort of scrolling right across the screen or something like that. So let's give that a go. Uh, so I'm going to put on a uh, shape first of all and let's this is going to be our sort of bars 
So let's say that we're going to make this, uh, how many bars should we have? Uh, say eight, four come up, four come down. Uh, so I'm just going to make that like that. So how big would they need to be? Let me get my uh, style editor. So we've got uh, basically with, uh, let me just show you where this is as well. <laughs> so when you want to uh, edit anything, so we've got our green canvas, basically, that's our transparency, if you like. Uh, and now anything we add on to that and add the animation, it's all going to sort of uh, uh, just appear on our screen when we actually run it. So what I'm he doing here is I'm creating uh, some bars. So I want eight of them and I'm going to basically have four of them come up down from the top and four of them come up from the uh, the bottom sort of in this effect. <laughs> uh, and then we'll have the text fly in. So I'm thinking that they'll make these bars black. Uh, and so what I want to do for that is now that I've added on a shape, I just went up to the shape at the top and I just grabbed a rectangle. So now I'm going to go over to here. We've got the uh, uh, the format panel. So if I click on that one, uh, and then what I want to do first is let's give it a color. So I'm going to make it black uh, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the size of it. Now you can obviously just do this by eye. You can drag it like this and it will just sort of do the alignment for you. Uh, but also what you can do is if you come over to the arrange panel over here, uh, you can actually specify the, si the size uh, completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to and the position as well. First of all, the position, it's always from the top left corner. So I'm just going to make this uh, zero, zero, because that means basically it's uh, starting from exactly in this top corner here. And now the size of it, this is, uh, uh, I suppose technically I should do this as a 4K. You can just change the size. Uh, in fact, let me just show you. I won't do it, but let me show you where to do that. So when you come into the document over here, um, we've got widescreen, so it's selecting the right sort of aspect ratio for us. Uh, and you can come in here and you can change between standard and uh, custom. So uh, widescreen or, uh, sorry, you can change between standard and widescreen. So 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Uh, but you've also got this one, custom slide size. Now when it's selected 16 by 9, it will just default to the sort of HD 1080p, uh, 1920 by 1080 as it were. So here you can see that. But you could just change that to be 4K and actually create 4k overlays um, so that is uh, another option you can uh, you can do to just make sure the resolution is the same as your output if you are outputting in 4k also if you made them in 1920 by 1080 uh, you can just go in and change that and it will generally scale everything up so if you've got text and images and uh, things like that on the, the screen it will just do all of the scaling so you can always go back and do that afterwards if you've got some like old presentations that you need to do uh, keynote specifically is quite good at, uh, at maintaining that and doing the scaling properly obviously if you have got low res images in there it is going to be blowing them up to you know double their size so uh, so the you know, that might have a slight issue but in general everything will maintain its positions and it will all look good so uh, that was uh, a little bit of a diversion but let me come back to the format because now we want to set the size so the, the the height of this is 1080 so I'm going to change this one to 1080 uh, and then we want eight of these and it's 1920 wide so we need 280 for here uh, 240 sorry there we go so now we've got a bar and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this one across like this uh, and then I'll copy it again to here I could go in and put all of these values in manually in terms of like the actual exact position of them but I'm hoping that this will just uh, all nicely work out in the end now I've got something quite not quite right there. Let me have a little look. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That was where the gap was. I'm just nudging these over until they are basically uh, completely next to each other rather than having any overlap because they should all just perfectly stretch to the very edge. There we go. That's it. <laughs> so now I've basically got these four rectangles. So what I want to do is I want to have uh, some of them fly in from the top and some of them fly in from the bottom. So let me uh, just have this like this. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add the animation. So I'm going to come to the animate, uh, add an effect. And then we want these to uh, move in. It's actually the, uh, uh, the, w the word. And we don't want build out because we want them to actually appear first of all. <laughs> That helps if they come in first before they go out. So we'll have that as uh, it is actually fly in. There we go. Uh, so that is basically, no, that isn't the one we want. Do beg your pardon. We do want move. 
<laughs> uh, move in. That's what we want, not fly in. There we go. So that is moving in, but it's moving in from the side at the moment. So we want some of these to move from the top and some of these to move from the bottom. So uh, now that we've actually got those in there, we basically want alternate ones. So I'm going to just come and highlight the alternate ones on this side. So you can see we've highlighted uh, these sort of alternate ones. Let's have these ones, the direction over here, we can change move. We want those to go top to bottom. Uh, and then we can click on the, uh, let me just move this out of the way a little bit. We can click on the build order so that we can see when these are all happening because we do want them all to happen at once, but I'll just get the direction done first. Uh, and then these ones here, uh, we want these ones to move uh, whoops, bottom to top. So these ones we're going to have bottom to top. So now what we want to do is, if you remember from the last video, we've got this build order, which is basically going to tell us when uh, these things, these animations are going to happen. And we want them to all happen with that first one. So it all happens at the same time. So I'm going to drag that onto there. That's a shortcut way of doing, of sort of linking them all together. But it's still saying after previous. So we want it to happen with the previous like that. So now if I preview it, you can see what's happening. This is just sort of moving in like that. Uh, so that is uh, what we've got there. Now, what we could also do is we could play around with the timing of it if that's a bit too slow or a bit too quick. So let's try that. It's a bit faster, isn't it? So we'll leave that one like that. Uh, and then what we want to do is uh, now that we've got that there, uh, we want to have some text flying in, don't we? So what we could do, though, just before we do that, is we might want to actually just put in the uh, the build out while these are nice and clear and we can see them easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a build out effect. Uh, and then we're basically going to do exactly the same. And what we want to do is have those move out. Uh, but again, we're going to have to adjust the direction of them. <laughs> so again, I'm going to take these. Uh, uh, which way did this came? So this came from the bottom. So let's have it move uh, bottom to top again. Uh, as it moves out. So we want alternate ones again. Whoops, you can see, there we go. I'll get that one. Hang on a second, do that over here instead. It helps if you, it has, helps if you press the right button, doesn't it? There we go, I was pressing Alt instead of Command, which is how you select multiple ones. So what we want to do with those is we want those to move bottom to top, uh, and then we want these other ones here. There you go, pressing the right button and it works amazing, isn't it? Eh? Next one is top to bottom. Uh, and then again, we want these all working uh, together with each other. So if I uh, preview this now, uh, you can see that those are moving out. Ah, one thing I forgot to do, I forgot to say that they needed to happen with that particular action rather than uh, after it. So I'll come down to here where we want it to start. Uh, start with previous, so that's gonna move out like that. Uh, you notice there's a little bit of a bounce there. So it sort of bounces up before it comes down. Uh, I'm not sure that that is what we want in this uh, particular case. So we can take that off here. We can move that bounce and unclick that and we can unclick it from here as well. Like that. So uh, now what we've got is basically the uh, scissors come in and then they go out the other side. Now let's have a look at what that actually looks like on the output because uh, it's interesting to see how that's going to look when we do this as screen share uh, green screen. <laughs> so let's come to uh, screen sharing and toggle that one on. So now watch what happens when I advance this slide. You can see it basically uh, should, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> it started from the beginning, I beg your pardon. <laughs> That's not what I wanted it to do. It should now, <laughs> hang on a minute, what's going on? I've got the wrong slide selected. That's why. Silly Billy. <laughs> right, let's try this again. There you go. You can see how that basically just masked the screen. And now when I advance again, then it's going to basically unmask it. So that's just basically applying that to uh, over the top of my uh, my video, isn't it? So that's what we're trying to get to. And now what I want to do is I want to animate some text actually in between those uh, build in and build out of those, uh, those bars. So uh, I'm going to come and grab some text. So uh, that is basically just up here. You come and grab a text box like that. Uh, and then we can basically add in whatever we want. So uh, let's add. Uh, this is our great text. Uh, and in fact, let's uh, show you how, how should we have this working? Should we have a big sort of cinematic scroll across the screen? Maybe that's what we should do. 
let's do that. So what we want to do is we just want to make this text uh, massive. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to adjust the text is I'm going to come to format. And then I'm going to come to text over here. And then I'm going to change the uh, font. Uh, this is the one that I use on my channel usually, Gibson. Uh, and then I'm going to change the size of it to, let's see, 300. How's that? 10 times bigger. Uh, that's actually probably still a little bit small. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Uh, now we have got a slight width issue of this text box. We could alter that by going into the arrange and uh, changing the width manually. Uh, but let's do it like this. So we want this to basically just scroll across the uh, entire screen like that. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually just going to, uh, I could have it sort of transition in and then transition out, but it's really too big to fit on the screen in one go, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave the text over here to start with, uh, and then I'm going to use the move tool. So the move tool, move tool is another uh, animation. Uh, so I'm going to come over to animate. Um, but rather than a build in or build out, it's just an action that's going to happen on it. Uh, and so there's no sort of appearing or disappearing, although that will be the effect because it's currently off screen this side and I'm going to move it off screen to the other side. So I'm going to click on add effect and we're just going to use this one, this move like that. Uh, and then you can see it just does put a little bit of a move into it automatically in a arbitrary direction, which is usually left to right. Uh, but basically this line depicts the, uh, the movement that it's going to uh, take. Uh, but we have got the sort of set, uh, the ending position has been sort of highlighted. So I can grab this and you can see that just by moving this around, it's actually moving the path that it's going to go on. So all I want to do is I just want it to move uh, directly across the screen like this. Uh, and if I just bring it out this way like that, you can see that yellow line that's uh, appeared. I hope you can see that that the yellow line there is indicating that those two are on the same sort of horizontal plane. So they're aligned with each other. So I'll just leave that there. Uh, and now what would happen is if I uh, just preview that, uh, then you can see that that's going to scroll across the screen. Now that's a little bit too fast really because uh, we don't want it to just sort of whiz by quite so quickly. So if I do this, you can see that that is effectively going to create the effect of scrolling text. That might still be a touch too fast when it's on the bigger screen. Let me try four seconds. There we go. So there we, we've got our text now and the position that it's going to move from and to and the little animation. Uh, bear in mind as well that what we want to do is uh, we had this build in of all those rectangles and then we've got the build out where well, we actually want this one to appear right in between those, don't we? Just like that because we want that to happen first. And what we perhaps want to happen is I would say that we want the bars to come down first and then we want the text to go across, but perhaps there could be actually a bit of overlap in terms of the time. So the text starts running across before the bars have totally uh, finished moving in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that start uh, with build one. Uh, now bearing in mind that these builds all take 0.7 seconds. So I'm going to have this one start with build one, but I'm going to put a delay in of let's say 0.4 seconds. So basically after those bars have started coming in for 0.4 seconds, the text is going to then start scrolling across the screen, uh, by which time there will be over halfway across. So this text will be scrolling on the, uh, the black background. In fact, let's make that 0.5 just in case. <laughs> and then once the text has scrolled across, we then want to have the, uh, the bars disappear again. So let's have that one happen. Uh, let's have that one happen immediately after. We can adjust the timing a little bit afterwards. But at the moment, this is just white text. So if I was to actually just uh, preview this uh, whole animation, you see the borders. In fact, that's a bit small, isn't it, to see? <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's make that a bit bigger. Let's try that again. You can see that the bars come down, the text scrolls across, uh, and then uh, the bars disappear. But there's no transparency in there, which is in the actual text itself, which is what we're trying to achieve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select text and then I'm going to come over to my color picker and uh, I'll put the hex code for the green screen in the, uh, in the description, by the way, uh, but I have actually just added it to the color picker here. So come over to the, uh, the format, then come down to the, uh, the font. If you've selected text, usually it will just select the, uh, the text color anyway. Um, but if it hasn't, then just come down to the, uh, the format, come to text, uh, and then come down to here where this little color wheel is, uh, and then you can change it to green. So now we've got green text there. Uh, I just want to check it has 
changed for the other end of it as well yeah it has so uh, that is how we change the text now we may want to add something like maybe a drop shadow or something like that to it uh, or in this case it's obviously on black so let's put a white border around it so let's come to the uh, the text again now there are actually a couple of places where you can add drop shadows if you come into the style which is where you might think it is because you can't immediately see shadows or anything like that in here you might think well I'll come over to this text this style and then here we've got a border well if you add a border to here what it actually does is it's actually adding uh, let me just change the color of it so you can see it's actually adding a border around the text box rather than the text itself uh, so uh, however if you do use the drop shadow the drop shadow funnily does actually apply to just the text rather than the box itself so it's a bit of a uh, not necessarily consistent there but if I come over to the text the place where we want to add this is basically in this little uh, cog wheel here so I'll click on that one uh, and there's a couple of things that you can do you can add an outline or a shadow so we want to just add let's say a white outline so I'm going to come to here change the color to white and then I will make that a little bit bigger let's say 10 you can see that it's adding this little outline around here it might be a bit faint for you to see at the moment but it is adding an outline so now what's going to happen is if I uh, just come back here and we'll play this let's play this in a window and then I will come to second get that one out of the way so that you can see a little bit uh, toggle my little green screen on and now when I play this there we go you can see through the text it's still probably a little bit quick that is to be honest for uh, uh, for that it just the speed that it went across the screen it looked a little bit too quick so I might just quickly go in and uh, talk my green screen off and I might just change that so if I come down to the animation the build order you can always get back this is our text so let me just change the uh, the timing of that and I'll make that say five and a half seconds that will be a little bit slower in fact let's make it six and seven <laughs> six and a half or seven there we go so that should hopefully look a little bit better so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of uh, I'm going to actually activate this first then I'm going to come out of my uh, my demo mode so that you can see this full screen and then I'm going to uh, toggle my little green screen screen sharing on and then let's play this and see what happens now one thing just to note that I nearly did which I did do in my first video by the way I left my little mouse on the screen so you don't want to be doing that because you don't want it to look like you've got a mouse somewhere in your your scene so do make sure that when you are screen sharing it's easy to forget your screen sharing because it's obviously transparent you can't see it but just make sure your mouse isn't over the screen so I'll move that out of the way uh, and then let's see what this slide looks like when I advance it uh, oh and I've done it again I've gone to the completely the wrong slide <laughs> You've got to make sure you've got the right slides of course as well let's try that again shall we <laughs> so here we go this is uh, what that animation looks like it's happened again hang on a minute something's not right here <laughs> I must be pressing the wrong button uh, one second that's what we want there we go <laughs> I got there eventually <laughs> So that is basically how you make an animated overlay that uh, comes in uh, with text that is transparent and fades out to a transparent background. And uh, that is all for this particular video. But I am obviously, as I say, going to be making another few videos. And in the next video, what we'll look at is how to do some masking so that you can have things that appear that they're coming from uh, behind uh, existing elements that you've got on the screen, even though that this is actually right on the top of the screen. So that is what I'll be covering in the next video. If you found this useful, as ever don't forget to go and like and subscribe and in the meantime check out some of these other ecamm live videos coming up next have a great day